Welcome back to another video. Today I'm here at Red Wolf Technology and we're going to be taking a look at some 3D printers. And one of the things that's really cool that they do is they 3D print tools for electronic repair. So today I'm going to be doing a quick repair on an iPhone using 3D printed tools along with taking a look at some of the other features that these 3D printers can do with their ability to 3D print cases and things like that. So let's get into the video. Right off the bat, let's see what it looks like to 3D print a white sputter. So there's the print all done. Let's take it out. Let's take a look at this newly printed part. As you can see, it has some supports from below. Just gonna snap those away real quick. I'm gonna break away nice and easily. This one towards the tip is a little bit thicker, but with a little persuasion, and snap away. All right, I'm gonna take a little razor blade here and I'm just gonna shave off a little bit of this little legs, making it look nice and pretty. Other than that one little spot, the rest of it is impeccable. And apart from all of the fun cases that can be printed, a variety of tools such as these picks and these sputters can all be printed in like 15 minutes or less. And this is just a concept for now, but look, you could even put one of your screw bits in there and you have a new screwdriver. And only like 15 minutes to, to print a nice little case like this. Now today we've got this old iPhone. This is an iPhone 6. And uh, fixing it for my son because it's perfect for like a micro tablet. Something where he can plug his headphones into it. He can play his games, listen to music and things like that. The only issue with it is you can see if I move the cable this way, I get the plug me in symbol. It goes back and forth between charging, not charging. So here I've got a tester. This will test the charge port. If we plug it in, it's gonna run a quick test and it'll tell us if everything's good. And it says, everything's good. Now if I just twist this a little bit to this side, it's gonna run the test again. And this time it says we've got a bunch of failures. OLs, 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 OLs. Which means that the charge port, even though at a specific angle, is charging is not making contact. So today, using 3D printed tools, I'm going to repair this iPhone. Minus the, you know, screwdrivers as the only thing that I'll use that isn't 3D printed. All right, so I've got the penelope screws out. I'm gonna take the pick here and we'll slide it in and so we can pop up the screen. I'm sure I'm not the last person to be in this one, but the iPhone 6 did not have an adhesive seal, so they're a little easier to open up. And I am definitely not the first in here because there's been work done on the motherboard. All right, let's disconnect the charge port and the battery. And we can disconnect the display, the home button, the touch, and the ear speaker. And what's nice about this model is I don't have to remove the battery or the motherboard to remove the charge port. So let's remove the Taptic engine real quick, the loudspeaker, so that we can extract the charge port. Start by removing the screws, and out comes the Taptic engine. Next, the screws for the speaker. Now we're gonna take our new spudger that we just printed, and let's disconnect the coax antenna, just like that. We'll pull it back, and then with the screws out, I can now pop out the loudspeaker. Let's take out the rest of the screws for the charge port and the headphone jack. Man, this brings me back to old times. When I started doing repairs, the iPhone 6 wasn't even around yet. The newest phone was the iPhone 4. It wasn't even the 4G yet. Now again with the sputter, we'll go ahead and pull out the charge port. Get under the flex there and pry it up. Then we can pop out the charge port. Pop off the little microphone, dislodge the audio jack, and out comes the charge port. Let's take a quick pause from the repair and look at some of the things that this can do as well. Look at the shape that this can 3D print, and it can hold the weight of a grown man. The, intric the intricacies that these 3D printers can accomplish is amazing. Get out our new charge port. This is an original and premium charge port. Transfer over the little rubber gasket here to the headphone jack. And what's really nice about these ones is we can peel off the adhesive for the microphone. And there's even one for the seal around the actual charge port itself. So we'll peel that one off along with the one on the back here with the gold adhesive. Let's install this inside the phone. Slide in the headphone jack. All right, 
I had to source some of the brackets and screws because it was missing them, but we are about ready to finish this repair. So let's go ahead and finish installing the charge port. We'll install the loudspeaker and screw it on down. We'll install the vibrator, Taptic engine, peel off the last protective sticker thingy for the charge port and connect it on up using our 3D printed spudger. Let's go ahead and connect back up the coax antenna here. Now we'll click it on down. All right, so now we just need to install the display. We'll connect up the digitizer first, then the LCD, the home button, and the proximity sensor assembly. And we'll install the new bracket with its corresponding screws. Now we can connect the battery, which is still the original from when this one was manufactured, which will only limit my kids playing time, which is totally fine. And we'll put back our last bracket. All right, so now that we've got all of that back in, let's go ahead and put the screen back on, click it on down, get a set of panel up screws, and we'll tighten those on down. And for the moment of truth, let's go ahead and plug in our tester again, see if we can get those to change. And there we go. And what I'm looking for is for it to not go back into the testing mode when I wiggle it around. If it retests, that means that it felt like it lost continuity and regained it for a second, which will trigger a new test just as if we were pulling it out and plugging it back in. It automatically runs the test. So still good, of course. Let's go ahead and officially plug it on in. Here we've got the charging symbol. And when I wiggle it, the little lightning cord does not appear which means this is charging. So we'll let this turn on, but yeah. Everything you see right here, including the display case for these 3D printed cases, was printed. Everything you see was 3D printed. The cases, the stand, all of it, the tools. Here's a fun one for iPad fixers. You've got your battery spacer so you can work on the iPad without shorting anything out. This should, this will eventually, I'm assuming, have a bunch of tools in it, but it, it spins, so it rotates so you can get to whatever you've stowed away in it. And being able to print your own tools on command. So over time, every tech knows these spudgers, the tips, they wear, they wear out. So being able to just simply hit print and like 15 minutes later have a brand new tool, pretty cool. All right, so we are on and if I can get that to focus, we are charging. So this is now fixed. And to give you an idea of what else this 3D printer can do, take a look at these cases here, the detail, being able to print these different patterns for the newest iPhones. And one of the coolest parts about having the ability to 3D print these cases is it's available for basically any model out there. You've got your iPhones, your Samsungs, your Motorola's, Oppo, Vivo, you name it, either they have it or they can make a file for you to be able to print whatever style you'd like. So. so one of the really cool things is once you've installed the filament, it literally just self-aligns, it pulls it through, it gets everything set up for you. And when you're printing, you can print items with up to four different colors, which is really cool. And what's really nice is the footprint of this is actually quite, you know, small. It doesn't take up much room on your desk, whether it's below or above on a shelf. Uh, it's a Approximately 15 inches, maybe 16 inches squared here. Yeah, so not a whole lot of room to store this. I mean, you might need more room for the filaments, but it all depends on the amount you're doing, the colors and everything. So what's really kind of cool about the 15 minute cases is you can take this base that has this amazing color shift into it with all those different rainbow colors and we'll print directly on top of that. It self aligns in the back and then literally just snaps down with magnets there. And we'll do a, a 15 minute print to see what that looks like. All right, so let's peel this guy up. Nice. And look at that pattern. See if I can get some better lighting on this. And there's the MagSafe here that we can just adhere. It has this adhesive that slaps into the back here. But look at that design 
that it imprints right into the plastic. That is amazing. So here's the platform that we used for that one. And on the back side, there is a completely different pattern. Here you can see there's a camo with one a uh, like a carbon fiber scatter there. And those can be used with the multicolors as well. So that you get the multicolor with the added light changing texture on the back. So that's just a quick look into the 3D printing world when it comes to repair in general, but the ability to print a case, a custom case for your customer, along with printing new tools and tools that you use on a daily basis to do your, your repairs instead of having to order them or find them. You could just simply print a new one when it gets damaged or lost. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you need to contact them, I'll link it down in the description. If you want this for you and your shops, I'll leave their info in the description below. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.